Um, my wife, Dallas, and I live on Kauai, which is the northernmost of the Hawaiian Islands. And for some time now, it's been ground zero for genetically modified organisms, which are called in Hawaii, in Europe, sorry, uh, genetically engineered uh, crops. Uh, the idea is that you splice in genetic material from another organism that renders the plant, such as corn, immune, uh, not to pests, but to pesticides. The Kauai itself is a place to experiment with poisons. They don't grow corn in order to sell it as food. They grow corn in order to experiment with various poisons on it and see how it withstands. The result of all this is um, a blackened, withered plant with a gorgeous head of corn, golden corn, at the top of it. The trouble is it's been spread five or six times during its growth by poisons, which corporations say um, dissipate very quickly so the corn is safe to eat. But this is big, big business. Uh, it's a very complex, multi-layered operation. And in order to get some sense of it into a poem, um, it seemed to me after a while it may be possible to do it using the format of the Anglo-Saxon Chronicles, an early history of Britain that goes into the West. Um, so that's one uh, form in, in, the, in the sequence of, of poems here. Um, there's also the question of Salome. Uh, Salome was the daughter of Herod. Um, there's very little about her in the Bible, but it got elaborated subsequently. Um, Basically, she became enamoured of John the Baptist, who Herod had in a dungeon. And she um, made advances to him. These were rejected, and she demanded his head on a platter um, uh, in, in revenge in order to entice Herod, her stepfather, to uh, agree to this. She did the Dance of the Seven Veils a striptease for him. Um, Caravaggio took this up. Um, late 19th century decadent artist took it up. And Oscar Wilde wrote a play called Salome, in which he takes the whole thing a bit farther. Um, Salome is not only in love with Yucanan, uh, the name for John the Baptist in this play, um, she wants to kiss him. She wants to kiss his lips. And when she's rejected, she not only does the dance, gets the head on a platter, but proceeds to kiss the head. She will kiss his lips, dead or alive, so to speak. Uh, the whole um, Salome thing reached a, a, a pitch in Paris in the 1920s when it was called Salomania. Everybody was trying to be Salome. And one person who got into this was a dancer, an American dancer called Louis Fuller, who previously had done various exotic uh, dances involving elaborate lighting effects. Um, so that should be enough to, to get the thing to make a bit of sense. <laughs> Plate 37b. Drawn from remembrance, these are the sexual garments. Rooftops, a vast convex earth, an immense shallow hollowed. We look to you, through you. The book, they're saying, will go the way of architecture. Medieval technique of illumination conceived as light shining into you via the text so porous walls of Gothic churches aspired to acid of the book. 
porous walls of Gothic churches dissolved in book acid. Those within dwelt in nuclear light. Particularities run like clouds. Loss, loose, soul. A positive non-singular of limited shelf life. Nothing is lost. Nothing can be lost. 1971. This year was found at the monastery of Cetus in the place called Berkeley. Thought was likened to property for the public good deemed private. 1988. OTA this year amended the 1946 Federal Trademark Act, Act to vouchsafe. The witnesses put to them signed upon Christ's cross with their fingers while they agreed with their tongues. 626. Then promised Paulinus he would give his daughter to God if he would accomplish by praying to God that he might strike down his enemy. If. 1603. Akuni and her troop on a dry Edo riverbed sold tickets by day for stage performances, by night their dividings. Odd, bent, far out, kabuki. Boy troops too, to whom samurai flocked, there were bannings. Kabuki's condition nonetheless, 1653 to this day, that fully acted plays replace hawker shows and all performers be male. 1607. Caravaggio Salome scants from her platter, unbearably poised between vigour and Greco, you must not look at her. 1893. Photons forever lash. La Fabrica Illuminata in futures and cathedral factories, fire swirls Louis Fuller's body as into water seen without repose dissolves into, as if they don't weigh enough to keep it on the stage, the page. Plate 40D. They could not step into vegetable worlds without becoming the enemies of humanity. 1972. Dupont fought cancer at National Institutes of Health and killed 2065 in this word-building field, would be called the laboratory. Then they were protected from market forces and common law for 25 years. Then Dupont baptised his three children biotech, drug industry, academic research. Then children of the mind in dramas and law courts of the techno fields. 1980. Baptism received patent who commanded him to exchange title with his creature. 1837 to 1850, in this king's easy days, was the sugar rush. Wilde got his, uh, his friend Aubrey Beardsley to do illustrations for the text of Salome that Dallas, my wife, uh, directed kabuki style in Queens College, uh, in New York. This is Wilde. Play 37A. For the chaotic voids outside of the stars are measured by the stars. 1894. Show me thy designs, Aubrey. A queen bee goes lunarly lazy over the first genitalia. Eve lashed garden nipples over vulval detrumescence. Thus rarely understood the dance, Aubrey. Ah, uh, but up from the docks, they are black and white. Didst not my sensei? 
Away from the docks, they are Japanese, they are shoji doors. I had had gilded strips of Japanese matting, cutting the odour of turquoise sky. 1046, arsenic sulphide, I had had shine out from the pages as substitute for gold. 1894, truth is in black and white, Aubrey. Ah, why didst thou not see my Byzantine? 1980 to 1993. King to the Abbot. I will pray you, dear friend, that they work quickly on the task, and I for that purpose will find you gold and silver, land to property. 1993. This year, biology profs and biotech companies petitioned for equity, and General Farm changed to a two tiered pricing policy for his dial a mouse. Filing died. 1021. Liner spines squid the vellum, dung lime for scraping off of hair, lifted through sand. Then he ordered it from that day, sent through all the places of education. 1907. New century. Newborn Amess. Art Nouveau. New school for Salome's vaudeville roof of the New York Theatre. 2000. The Little Theatre, Flushing, New York. Upstage centre, a huge white moon. Downstage, the young Syrian and the page of Herodias stare out over the audience, yearning and fearful, to the seven-foot moon behind and the princess it renders cut out for all to see, shiver. 800. Charlemagne, crowned Emperor of the West, excoriates elaborations, obscuring the letter. 1907. Pigments on glass slides lighter, but a muddy of primaries, pigment and prism. Hence, too much ballast this time to slip it. Fuller's fleshy failure as Salome. Even in Théâtre de la City that was home to Salomania, not to say to La Louis, dispersed as she was through bristling marchifacts, prowled by Breton et compagnie. Where had she gone who used to disappear? 1980. Weeds landed on the west side via 94 gangplanks, ravaged the coast, and strangled many crops. PHEs came to the Pope from wars in the east and offered treasure so he would give them the Elsie Pallium. Their leader was Glyph of Solomon Cain's harsh lineage. Safety they casualized as a priority. 1992, they sold, taught, told interchangeably reframing many a controversy, paying a living wage. 1994, the Pope told some of his things for their skill in poisons that by dose, cusp, dwell, or cure, but oppose selections longer. I give to Glyph and his pharmaceutical exorcists the waters mears, fens, weirs, and all the lands around, so no man have inscription there but them. This is the gift. From rear of the cliffs that overlook Polahalli, county land, south past the missile base and eleven tree miles along the slope swath behind the Kaikaha, Waimea, Makaweli, through floodplain of the Kala, Robinson land, the sweep from foothills to ocean to the place men call Hanapepi Valley, A and B land, 
and from Knutson Pass, seven miles to Kilohana, Steve Caseland, erstwhile Grove Farm. In the plain that passes the airport through Hanamaulu to Wailua River and everything around for absorption. It is little, this gift, but it has four growing seasons and it is my will that they hold these lands for a royal tax. And retired personally from the utterance so that henceforth it floated, darted. 11.31 This year were fine dust deposits inside latched windows and departure blocked by property unsellability. Thereafter, the hen fowls died. 2012 And it gave them supermarket aisles and care of St Giles and star chamber briefs for deniability and addled the pates of some in protest so careers might be built and pilloried on caricature. Plate 41D In Damascus curtained Osiris, Isis, Horus. In Egypt, dark their tabernacles on Nile floating. Mirrors. Each eye closes like a mouth, opens as one on two sequential bodies, one jitter of lines foretold and felt, the other should graze in passing. A florid set of abstract lines running close to the bones of hotly anticipated baggage. Round, spinal, tensile weave, each eye closes as a mouth and opens, hurries and prolongs. Hotly anticipated baggage exacting ophthalmic absorption. On exactly music says some breathless and deadly operation underway. Specs electro-pipped snaking depositrons. Eight colours. Nine loathing the occupiers. Eleven the scrim in staging, twelve, perspectival oxymora, fourteen, Yukanon and bell, gong, clapper accompaniment, sixteen, Yukanon's lighting, black and white, if we blur steps, Herod stamps around his Nabika Kama, slow, clack, glimpse through part of kimono, lose an albino body stocking, petal nipples, pubic cluster of Byzantine curlicues. All is artifice. Herod shudders into great release. We see your own body fretting in fetters with a ravening destiny, mouth pressed to the image's lips, or the head's still warm lips, energy press, fading in time as shields gather. Smoke from the burning ground shrouds. Smoke from the burning ground shrouds all. Tantric has it. That's it. Thank you, Gilbert. Great. Okay. Okay. Great, Gilbert. So um, I'm just going to dive in. Mm -hmm. Okay, thanks for that. It was really brilliant. Um, I know, you know, we'll, um, you know, I could say a lot about our introducer, you and me and whatever, it doesn't really matter. I can do that another time. So I'll just sort of dive straight into sort of my response to, to what you just read. And the sort of first question I have is this relationship between, what I don't quite understand is the relationship between Salome and the kiss and the lips and the Baptist and the GM you know, the GM crops and, and what the sort of analogy metaphors, you know, and why the, you know, the, the, uh, the, the, those particular texts for you speak about or are a way to speak about this, to, to, to write poetry about mm -hmm. that particular, mm -hmm. what is it that fused in your mind? So how is Salome, how does it, how is it working for you? Why is Salome? 
Um, one initial answer would be um, the line after she completes the dance and her body is revealed, but it's in a body stocking with uh, little flowery nipples and curly cute pubic, pubic hair. Ah. All is artifice. Um, and I don't want that to be necessarily bad. I mean, I, I, I don't want to do a kind of Ginsburg um, critique of a technology that sort of he does in plutonium mode. It's bad because it's not natural. Uh -huh. I don't think that's a very useful way to go anymore. So all is artifice. Um, bad things are artifice, but also what I would hope are good things. Yeah. The poem is, is, is dripping in artifice. The poem is artifice. So that would be one thing, the, the, but, but more exactly, and the interesting thing is, I put Salome in before I, I had any idea why. Um, so if, if it was rewriting it, I may tinker here and there, but probably not that much. But in any case, the whole point is the head. Mm -hmm. The the stalk of, of withered blackened corn with the beautiful head uh -huh. that's gone through this death process. Um, the, the insistence on the corporations, I don't, I'm not sure, but I don't see why they couldn't have made the crop simply resistant to pests. And in fact, there's a little bit of roundup that, that pesticide of Monsanto's, which makes them marginally resistant to, to pests. Um, I'm not sure why it's only a little bit, but I mean, that's a poison too, mm -hmm. genetically worked into the plant. Um, but they, it seems to me there's a kind of death thrust there. Um, they want to spray pesticides, they want to sell pesticides on a massive scale worldwide. Um, they also try to make seeds um, that can't reproduce themselves, so every crop you have to buy new seeds. Mm -hmm. um, string of farmer suicides in India and across uh, the Midwest as a, as a result. Um, Salome wants to kiss the lips of John the Baptist of Yocana in mm. Wilde's play, which is which is Wilde's own edition. You don't get that in Moreau. She's not kissing him, she's mm. holding it up. Mm. Um, and she will do that even if they're dead. It's, the head is still beautiful to her. Mm -hmm. And she can still draw some energy from those life, lifeless lips. And, and I think that was probably. No, it's great. I mean, I can see the I can see the visual relationship now that which wasn't self evident to me with the head on the plate, the head of the corn, the the, 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 the lost body or the dissipated body, mm -hmm. and a kind of lust more or a kind of a, a kind of something with that, that what you said. Mm. What interests me too, though, is that you said, and this is like about about working methods and about your your methods, because you said you already kind of Salome had already kind of entered into this poem or this piece before you really knew why mm. or and this is this really intrigues me about you know the poet's methods like how you bring a thing together what are the elements because it's not like this is conceived in a way to be a, a, an exposition or clearly this is something where images or ideas are, are hovering around and you're, you're drawn and attracted to them already mm. and then you have a, a, a something you really wanted to talk about like you wanted to write about this GM crops and you wanted to to make poetry about it mm. and so I'm just intrigued about the methods you use like how is it that Salome comes together I mean what is your working method in terms of how you would bring these disparate tropes motifs ideas and how they end up gravitating into the same orbit and, and, and resonating with each other um, every now and again I know something has to go in and I'm not entirely sure why 
So I put it in and tried to find it out why. Mm -hmm. um, it's going out on the limb before I know why that particular limb. Mm -hmm. And uh, very often the limb just cracks. Mm -hmm. Um, sometimes then you retreat uh, uh, <laughs> then you sort of cast around for another branch <laughs> yeah. but uh, yeah so um, so there I, I think it, it worked in the end but you, I guess it, you're already composing a big so maybe you could say more about this is the second book in uh, of this series and I'm guessing that you're already thinking the tree is like the series I'm guessing for, to, to use metaphors you you're already working on a long series of works, which are part, which is part of a book. So in a sense, you've already got a lot of material that you are manipulating, you know, putting together, trying out. So do you want to tell us something about the bigger book, the bigger project that this that piece was from, and how it fits in that story? Um, the bigger project was an attempt to. Um, Well, um, my mother died in 2000, and the night she died, I was actually reading um, work by William Blake. I think it was the, the poem called Vala. <clears throat> and Vala was the one poem he didn't eliminate, the one big one he didn't eliminate. Um, but I, I loved the rhythms. I thought the rhythms are terrific. And a few, uh, a few weeks later, I thought, why don't I do a version of a Blake poem that follows the rhythm, follows the stress pattern, but with different words? Yeah. So that's what I tried. Um, and the poem that seemed not too long, but not too short, that would make for a substantial work of quote-unquote translation uh, was his penultimate prophetic book called Milton. Um, in Milton, um, it's 1804, Blake is in London, there's war on the continent, there's poverty and famine across the land where there are working conditions that are brutal. Um, he feels the need of inspiration by John Milton, whom he had called a true poet. He wants to be inspired by Milton. He wants even to be physically possessed by Milton. The problem is Milton, um, Milton had a, a very rigorous puritanical sexual morality that Blake doesn't share. So he's going to bring Milton down, he's going to summon Milton, but he's going to rehabilitate him along the way by reuniting him with his, the female part of himself that he had put off in his life. Um, Milton comes down, comes down from heaven where he's unhappy to earth to reunite with Alola, the name for his female side or female emanation. I mean, for Blake, um, there's no sexes to begin with. There's um, there's there's um, he, he there's I can't remember. He doesn't like hermaphrodite, or he doesn't like. Androgen, but one of those he doesn't like, the other seems okay. But that's how we begin, and then they split up into male and female. Um, so, uh, so that was that was the the overall project that I would that I I had admired Blake for years. I would um, try to respond to the tradition of Blake. Um, in early 21st century. Um, I shared a number of Blake's concerns. Um, I had worries about Blake, about Blake's um, 
bit on on orthodox religiosity. Um, just with Blake had worries about Milton's sexual morality. So it was an attempt to take on the heritage of Blake in 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 contemporary circumstances. Um, with those things having to be changed, which need to be changed. Mm -hmm. There's a line somewhere there that says uh, time don't just uh, complicate the solution, it breaks up the problem. So it becomes a different problem than what Blake faced. Uh, so that's the overall project. Um, and there were a number of materials that I already had uh, that I wanted to do work with. And, Others that that um, that showed up uh, as as the thing went on. Mm -hmm. um, I helped um, Dallas write um, an article for uh, for a theatre journal uh, out of Paris about Salome. Um, and, and fond of Wild anyway. So I wanted that to go in. Um, uh, when I was when I was working on this, I rewatched the video of her production, her Kabuki production. Mm -hmm. um, and Kabuki is a highly stylized form. Um, where her and here is stamping about on Nagabakama trousers, those are trousers that go way beyond the foot. So you have to, it, 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 it's very tricky not to fall on your face stamping around in these trousers that go beyond your foot. It, it takes training, everything's training. Mm. Um, she, 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 she created a music tape that would accompany it. There were some live musicians, there was uh, someone with a, a, a clapper uh, and there were others too. But basically there was a tape. That meant the whole play had to be precisely timed so that it wouldn't get out of sync. Um, and the actors, students had to be trained to use kabuki voices, which are very grand, or can be. Um, uh, let me kiss your lips, your Carmen, and all that. Um, so all is artifice, you bet, but it's an amazing performance. Um, and I've already written about it in prose, so I, I, I watched the, the video again and, and started making notes for writing about it poetically. And then um, the the the, the need, the desire to write about GMO, because that's tremendously co uh, controversial in in Kauai. Um, they've had to evacuate schools. Uh, there's a school and a hospital near some of these fields where these poisons are being spread. There's the, the, the companies, the corporations, which began with Monsanto, and then there was Syngenta, which is Swiss, and then there's the Chinese corporations come in and taken over those ones. They won't put up a buffer zone. They won't disclose what poisons they're spraying, many of which are more deadly than others. Um, it's pure laboratory stuff. Hmm. Um, so it seemed less for you to write about that in some way. I read a piece by Donna Haraway, Haraway. Um, I can't remember the name of the book. It's it's long after cyborgs and simians and such. Stanley the Trouble, not the recent one. No, no. The Onco Last, the yeah. female man meets Onco Last. Uh, no. Okay. Um, the other one. I can't remember. <laughs> we'll fill that bit in. Uh, and... Um, she does a long chapter on GMOs, and as you can imagine, she's her impulse is, is to sympathise with them. Um, 
but she goes in a pretty clear-eyed way through the various political maneuverings, mm -hmm. through the 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 buying of votes in the Senate and the House and such, and various committees that would um, discuss these and give them the go-ahead and, and massive lobbying operations. Um, but she did it fairly uh, chronologically. And I thought, oh my God, the Anglo-Saxon chronicles that, mm. that jump from year to year mm. and are fairly arbitrary. Um, st stories sort of flicker into possibility and then disappear, never come back. Mm -hmm. Fifteen years later, we're, we're finding something up. Uh, hen files are dying. For, you know, and, and the, so, so that seemed a way of doing it. And that's, um, that's highly artificial. And I, um, I, I was teaching um, English at that time in, in the local college and students were, um, the, some of the students were very anti-GMO, um, so much so that, that they filled essays with unsubstantiated claims about, you know, lots of people dying somewhere and, and you know, where, how do you know this? Well, they heard some, heard something. Um, someone ran against the mayor for for the title of the mayor, who was a surfer, and you know an energetic guy and very anti-GMO, but couldn't hold up his own in an argument with the mayor, even though the mayor wasn't making terribly cogent points. Um, Basically, it's money. The, the old sugar plantation families are renting out their land to these people. Um, but there's a lot of silliness in those who protest it. And I, I, I also wanted, in some way, that this is a caricature, mm -hmm. this Anglo Saxon stuff. Mm -hmm. um, it's a caricature, and that's part of the problem today if we're thinking about mm -hmm. um, what seem to be tremendously damaging technologies. Um, we've got to be very, very rigorous. I mean, I, I don't think people should go to this poem, Sizem, to learn about GMO. Um, I'm fine with going to size them to get some kind of aesthetic reaction to it, mm -hmm. but it's not it's not a scientific paper by any means. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was uh, I was struck by this um, you know, the the chron the, the 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 broken chronology, and uh, you know just putting two things together that I know we're you know familiar with. One was this kind of almost like a disrupted time sequence. So these, I've got three things that I think relate or triangulate. There's a dis disruptive historical time sequences where you're jumping backwards and forwards from different time, time frames, historical periods. So it's as if you're telling a story about how something came into existence, but it's clearly not what you're saying. I mean, isn't it, but it's got that feel mm. that it might be, you know, these, these various historical points with these coordinates in a constellation of historical moments that brought something into being. Or, you know. um, so that's one thing. The second thing is I couldn't help thinking with those questions of time and temporality, you know, Burroughs and Arpuk and the Mayans, and particularly the corn god, when he talks about the corn god being killed and death needs time and this, this relationship between the young corn god and death. And, and, and that brings to the corn and the death thing together. Uh, and, um, and, and, and finally, I think I've forgotten the third part, but it will come to me, that triangulates between those two things. So, oh, this and that's this, which is... We've been having a lot of discussions, obviously, um, over the weekend, um, but particularly about the Anglo-Saxon relationship to GM. And, you know, so those are three things. There's the, the temporal disruption, historical disruption, the Burroughs Corn God, and, and whether or not you think that, or in any way you're suggesting, that the, and there's something Anglo-Saxon about the procedure of genetic modification. Um... 
non Anglo Saxon, no. Um, I, if it was going to bring in any kind of Western prehistory, it had to um, it, it, it begins um, I can't remember when, when that history begins um, uh, 1971 this year it was found in the monastery of Cetus. It's a laboratory um, in the place called Berkeley. So some suggestion of, of scientists as, as contemporary priests, but the last um, reference from the Anglo-Saxon Chronicles is, um, is well before the first millennium. So, to get from one to the other, you have to go through an awful lot. Mm -hmm. So there's that um, raw gap that opens up. At the same time, it's using the the stylization of the Anglo-Saxon chronicle. So you get to the the valley men called Hanna Pepe or something. You know, that that's that's not contemporary discourse. That's that's the kind of thing the chronicles say. Mm -hmm. So. Um, so they're somehow uh, linked, but across across abyss abyssal gap gaps. Uh, 